It's been eight years since we released an album. We've been doing film scores and we've been doing a lot of work for other people's films and our own films. It was great to kind of throw off the shackles of what we've been doing for, for years beforehand and start finding out the music that we actually wanted to make. And it became a combination of all of those things combined for, well, how can we get this to fit with that? So it's this wonderful combination of all the things that kind of mean a lot to us. And every single album is different, so this is no exception, and we will never, ever want to do the same album twice. To stick to our guns of what we really, really like doing, big orchestras, big beats, and all those things that we kind of really stand by. I mean, you know, we're not shy of using an orchestra in a very large way. Practically, as a voice nearly all the way through the album, there's still something that can't be replicated about using an orchestra. It's got that subtlety and the, the, the range of dynamics and the, the, the power, just not only emotionally, but sort of sonically. get an orchestra like Prague into our music is kind of one of the sort of no-brainers, it's essential, it's, it was what makes our sound us. I think it was a 52-piece orchestra. Because you told me to not let the orchestra get bored when they're playing, <laughs> it was just kind of like a red rag to a bull, so I kind of wrote <laughs> some very large pieces of, of orchestral music to go with the album. You know, one of our mutual passions is film scores. It's kind of like secondary psychology where you can become involved as the person that you're watching and then you're sort of writing, being that person or being that emotion. So you're sort of double implementing emotion in the film, albeit subtly or, or sort of in your face. And that's kind of the same thing as the album, except it's our emotion rather than you're sort of second guessing somebody else. You take particles of sound and turn it into these controllable clouds of movement. But quite often we've got this bed of sounds that we make up that then becomes rhythmical. And then those rhythms, kind of something sparks off it and it just lifts a certain pitch. And before you know it, you've got kind of a rhythm and a tone and a pitch, and then we can build songs out of that. So with sound all around you, it's picking those really interesting noises and then what you can do with them. So but hearing a room full of people playing your music back to you, sounds, utterly incredible. I never want lyrics to feel like a secondary part of the song and I want them to have just as a deep and powerful meaning. Even though, say for example, Superpower is one of the most buoyant, uh, bouncy, mad tracks that we've probably ever worked on. Partially it's about my mum. She passed away uh, in 2012 and she always used to see the light in the dark. She'd always find a positive view on it. Because the secondary part of that is sort of concerned about mental health. How you can be swallowed up by something and it can completely take over the way you see life. You come out of it and you build from it and don't let it get to you. Superpower is the ability to go through these things. That's what it's all about. Even though you've got this incredibly bouncy track, it's about finding that light. That's why it's called the light of the fearless. <laughs> 